Hi, I'm Krutika Bhatt and I'm a Group Vice President with Oracle Applications Labs. Today, I'm going to share with you details of Oracle's journey to the cloud. And I'm also going to touch on how we've been taking advantage of quarterly updates on that cloud foundation to achieve competitive advantage and to outpace change. These stories are what we like to call Oracle at Oracle use cases, examples of how we adopt our own technology. This benefits us internally, but also enables us to serve as trusted advisors to our customers, making their own journeys to the cloud. So let me share our journey now. As we move to the cloud, we employed a hybrid model versus a big bang approach. As a $40 billion company operating across 175 countries and employing more than 135,000 employees, we are just too large and complex for big bang. We followed a phased approach based on three core principles. In order, those were establishing the foundation, delivering immediate value, and replacing in functional increments. One key example of how we set a solid foundation early in our cloud journey was through our implementation of Oracle Accounting Hub. Along with this, we simplified multiple charts of accounts in eBusiness Suite into a single global chart of accounts. This was a very good way to start the journey because it isolated our subledgers from any disruption. Next, we looked for opportunities that could deliver immediate and incremental value. For us, those implementations included Oracle CPQ Cloud and Oracle Tenant Management Cloud, which gave our business either new automation or improved efficiencies. Then we looked at our core systems and in a few logical steps, moved them to the cloud. We moved HCM to the cloud in March 2016, implemented the financials and also supply chain planning in January 2018. The same year, in October, we implemented supply chain management for our hardware business. And in July 2021, we went live with our revenue backend systems for order management and receivables. We've already accomplished a lot and we've learned a lot. Some best practices I'd like to share include having a very strong business engagement model, including global process owners across the business who partner with global solution owners in IT. We also had a clear data migration strategy and a testing strategy that engaged the right stakeholders in the right areas of testing. And finally, we kept and keep the user experience for the main users front and center. Now, let me wrap up with a few thoughts on quarterly updates in the cloud. When I look to our present day operating in the cloud, it's a completely different experience than on-premise. Our SaaS implementation is configured to our needs, but it's not customized in an invasive manner. The product delivers updates every quarter, and we have to take these updates. They're smaller compared to the on-premise upgrades. They come with maintenance fixes, and new features. And because we don't have invasive customs, the updates themselves are very easy to consume. And once we've updated, we have access to a lot of the new features that product development has just released. And this way, we constantly have access to new functionality, new features, and frankly, new innovation, including emerging tech solutions. And all this makes it very easy for us to be able to not just keep pace with, but also outpace change. Just as charting a cloud journey comes with best practices, so does management of quarterly updates. It's critical to carefully review release documentation and have a rigorous feature tracking system. So you clearly outline which features are under review, which are not applicable, which are future roadmap, and which will be implemented and clearly define your testing plan, what will be tested, how, and by whom. And finally, constantly evaluate and refine your testing protocols, automating your regression testing wherever possible. I hope you found these stories and best practices helpful as you consider your own journey to the cloud. Thank you.